Because he was a bad magician, a very evil man, and he wanted Odette all to himself. Why did she have to be a swan? Because Rothbart put a spell on her. She would have to stay a swan forever until a man came along and fell in love with her and broke the spell. And did he? Well, one day a handsome prince came into the woods and he saw all the swans swimming on the lake. And he fell in love with the most beautiful swan of all. Odette? Odette. Did you get to be the swan? Yeah, I got to be the swan. And I was a very good swan. Now you're the princess. Well, you're the princess. OK, then you're the queen. OK. And George is king. Did you want to call him daddy? not daddy. Daddy's in heaven. He's George. But he loves you very much, you know. He's your second daddy. You know what would make him happier than anything in the world? If someday he could hear you say, I love you, daddy. Okay? I love you. Well, what do you think? Well, look at the prima ballerina. You are the prettiest little girl I have ever seen. Good job cleaning up your room, too. Looks nice. Everybody's ready. I'll be your escort. I love your house. I'm so sorry that we are late. Mr. and Mrs. McCorkle. Did you... Thank you. The guy's a genius. 300% return for taking over Harrington Mills. They're bankrupting it. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Leonard. This Hi. Mm -hmm. Glad you could come. Oh, thank you. you. Excuse us a second? Just need a word with you. Sure. See you, later. you tell him to maul his own wife. What was I supposed to say? You tell him to keep his hands off you. I don't care. Now, my hands. I <laughs> know. Oh, my God. It's so gorgeous, don't you? You like it? Yeah, it's just beautiful. It really is. Oh, Krista. George, you are a lucky guy. <laughs> Where's your present, Kristen? Ah, uh, mine's in the garage. Oh, what is it? A new Mercedes. Well, you were very good tonight. Absolutely wonderful and so pretty. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, Milton. Better late than never. Hi. Hi, Denise. Hi, Bennett. I'd like to stay, but they're sending me to bed. And you missed my dancing. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm sure you were terrific. OK, why don't you put your jammies on, and I'll be up in a bit, OK? OK. I love you. I love you, too. 
I was beginning to wonder about you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. I got stuck on a case. The traffic was an absolute oh, nightmare. Great. Uh, happy anniversary. Thanks. You're glowing. You look hey, gorgeous. <laughs> Are we expecting a blessed event? <laughs> Well, you don't want Jenny growing up an only child. I mean, George yeah. is going to spoil the rotten. Mm -hmm. he, he is already. You've done wonders for George, you know. I've never seen him so happy. Darling, hey. run and get us a drink, okay? Oh. Thank I can you. take a hint. Thank you. I knew the minute I met you, you were it. Yeah. You just thought I was after his money like everybody else. No, I didn't. <laughs> you were different. Oh, I was? How? Oh. Because you needed him. The others just wanted him, and that's not enough for George. I know him better than he knows himself. I didn't wrap it, but what's wrapping between friends? Happy anniversary. You shouldn't have done that. Do you love it? Bennett uh, flipped when he saw how much it cost. <laughs> so beautiful. Oh, look at all these. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. There you are. Honey, we need you down there. Okay, I'll be right there. You still awake, sweetheart? I was thirsty. They're all still talking about you. Saying what a wonderful dancer you are. You're going to be a great ballerina someday. And be the swan. And be the swan. Good night. Okay? <laughs> Sweet dreams, princess. You don't happen to be part of the Philadelphia Drakes, do you? Philadelphia Drakes? Yes, Doc. Uh, no, I'm Dr. Martin Drake, old friend of the family. Oh. Well, year one and still little lovebirds. A toast, everybody to the first anniversary of George Westfield's most successful merger. <laughs> Friendly takeover. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Two favorite girls. Huh? Here you go. George, George, I want to go rowing. Whoa! Uh, no, I don't. No, it's five, and you've got to get ready for Senator Jacob. Remember? Promised. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Mm -hmm. You'll be ready for the party right on time. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay.
line for 10 minutes, and then you have to come up and get changed, all right? Mom, can you hold the boat while I get in? Yeah, I'll hold the boat. Okay, wait a minute. Let me just untie this one. Okay. There you go. You sit right in the middle, remember? Yep. That's a girl. Got it. Okay, let me get you turned around. Okay. Push. Bye. That's it. Now pull back on the other work. That's it. Okay, good. That's it. Both together again. Both together. Good. Much better this time. Much better. Good. Now back to me. No, no, no. You can't go out wearing that dress. What's wrong with it? I don't want everybody to see all my assets. <laughs> I'll put on something the other wives won't hate you, man. Since when do you care what the other wives think? <sighs> Is Jenny getting her bath? No, I told her to put her bike away. She wanted to keep on rowing all night. Yeah, I know she loves that boat. I'll go. It's okay. I'll see what it is. Oh, Mr. Westfield, Mr. Westfield. <gasps> what is it? Jenny. Krista, you home? I'm in here. Hello. Hello, Krista. What brings you here? Oh, I'm heading home from the worst game of my life. <laughs> Thought I'd drop in and let you and George cheer me up. You're such a bad liar. George sent you, didn't he? Krista. She would have been eight today. We're all a year older. Except she drowned. I'm supposed to keep saying that over and over until it sinks in. That's what my doctor told me to do. What's your prescription? Isn't it a little early for cocktails? I told you it's her birthday. I'm celebrating. Krista, this isn't like you. Yeah, well, what's like me? Do you know me so well? What should I be doing? Having lunch with the girls at the club? Playing golf? I know what you're going through. You have through. no idea what I'm going through. I keep losing everybody I love. 
In four years, I lost my mother, my father, and my husband, my child. And I'm really sick of people looking at me with that expression on their faces. You can't understand. George understands. He'd be a lot better off without me. How can you say that? He's devoted to you. You're too wrapped up in your own pain to see how much he hurts. He's lost a daughter, too. Now he thinks he's losing you. Oh, all I keep thinking about is death and dying, Mark. And I didn't used to be this way. I, I, I used to be alive. You still are, Krista. So is George. Don't abandon him. I just want to thank you for sticking around. Oh, come on. No, I've, I've been awful, and I want to thank you for being a good friend. And I'm determined to get through this, and I thought that <clears throat> we could go shopping or something. <laughs> well, now you're talking. It's heavy-duty therapy. It saved my marriage. Listen, I've got two tickets to see Giselle for next Wednesday's matinee. We could have lunch first. We go shopping after. Wednesday? Come on. I'll pick you up at 10. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll pick you up. It's time I got back to practice. You sure? Uh -huh. Brought you something. It's her birthday today, and I, I wanted to remember. I just love you so much. I have you back now, don't I? Really, the last time that Ken brought me breakfast in bed, I had double pneumonia. But it just goes to show how much you can have if you decide to bounce back. I'm really big into that stuff, Krista. 
I can't believe I'm here with you. God, you don't know how much I've missed you. I mean, no, really, it has been so hard for me here in Connecticut. I just haven't made any friends, and I felt kind of lonely and out of place and uh, kind of hopeless, and it's... Krista. Krista! Look out! Don't come. was rising up over the street and she was smiling at me. She kept saying, wide awake. Hallucinations, Krista. You took a pretty bad bang. Is it my brain? There's nothing wrong with your brain, amazingly enough. They're calling you the miracle lady. You were clinically dead for almost six minutes. Honey, I'm going to walk down with Martin and get a bite to eat, OK? I'll be right back. I was all set to throw you a big welcome home party. Right. I wasn't sure you'd be up to it. No, I just want to be home with you. <laughs> you got that. And look what came. I see. Half the town misses you. The better half. Oh, that's all right, Milton. I'll take those. Would you make us some tea and bring it to the living room? Certainly, sir. Why don't you go in and sit down, hmm? I'll be right there. Oh. You'll be as good as new in no time. She's glad you're home, too. Where are you going? 
Where are you going? What? What? Mother? Krista? Mother said what? Krista, what are you doing? Uh. Krista, what are you, are you all right? What? In the trunk? In Mother's old trunk? What is it, baby? What do you want to show me? My mother's will. That's her handwriting. You act as though I'm making this up. It says right there that the necklace was to go to me and then to Jenny someday. Now, didn't Mother ever mention where she put it? No, she didn't. She died before she had a chance. I mean, my mother always put her valuables in weird spots. That's been in the family for years. It was my great-great-grandmother's. I never would have known had she not told Jenny where she hid it. And Jenny also said that no one ever really does. But it's in your mind, Krista. It's not real. It was real! Why won't you believe me? All right, sweetheart, all right. Okay, let's not upset ourselves. I'm not upsetting myself. He is. Jenny was here. I saw her. I heard her. She was here. George, you know that I'm telling the truth. Yes, I believe you. see how grandma's doing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> before you go in, there's something that we'd like you to have. It was Renee's. There were some things that she wanted certain people to have. She said you always admired it. And we wanted special people to have something to remember her by. Sleep, huh? Mm. I'm all hung over from pills. <laughs> Did you make him let me go home? Well, I don't know. We don't want another episode, do we? We're gonna have to do what Dr. Hamilton wants. She was just telling me how Jenny helped her find the locket. I want to go home. There's nothing wrong with me. 
Well, she looks pretty good to me, Doctor. What do you think, huh? I think sometimes the human mind under stress is capable of incredible things that we will never understand. Oh, that's reassuring. And I think sometimes that these experiences have great meaning, great personal significance. To heal them, we must explore them in a safe environment with professionals. Let me ask you something, Krista, and please don't be alarmed. Do you know, is there any history of schizophrenia in your family? Don't be alarmed, he says. No, there's no schizophrenia. Sweetheart, do you need anything right now? You okay? Yeah. Doctor? Well, you're looking a lot better than I thought you would. This Thank place you. is ghastly. No smoking here. You've got to get back to George. I've never seen him like this. I know. Oh, well, I gotta go home this weekend. Thank God. Maybe he'll calm down a bit. So, what have you got? I don't know. All they've done is just rule things out. They're crazy. They're just so stuck in all their terminologies and theories. They just simply refuse to believe that Jenny was real. Listen, don't laugh. But I did something. Phoned my channeler. Your what? My channeler from New York. I told you about him. <laughs> now just, just hold your judgment. He isn't what you think. He gave me the name of a doctor in New York who's supposed to be very good with this sort of thing. Dr. Margaret Newberger. She's a psychiatrist. Oh, and so is Dr. Hamilton. I don't know. Well, I just want you to know that she's also a medical doctor and she happens to believe people do talk to the dead. Look, Krista, they're psychiatrists and they're psychiatrists. She works with people like you all the time. She's even written books about it. I've, I've read them, or kind of read them. <sighs> yes, I know, Brady, I know. I haven't been concentrating like I should. I've got things on my mind. What? No, she's fine. She's fine. I just, just brought her home tonight. She looks great. Just needs a little rest, that's all. Yeah, but look on this other thing. You tell Duncan that if he goes ahead and bids on this thing, that I've got friends all over D.C., he knows who they are, they'll go ahead and kick his butt and run him out of this business for me. No, I mean it, Brady. Well, you tell him what I did to Dial and Wallace when they tried to screw around with me. You tell him he backs off on this or he's friggin' dog me. You got it? You call me first thing in the morning. Hi, sweetheart. How you doing? Okay. Would you like me to get out and light a fire? Hmm? Okay. What happened to the watch I gave you? Well, I took it off. I didn't want to lose it again. I know I lost it last week. I didn't realize it was gone until the bookkeeper came in. She found it on the office floor. It means so much to me. Well, I guess you're going to have to get the glass fixed. I know. But I've been thinking about other things. Like you. <laughs> Okay. Come. Okay, baby. Stop, stop. Come on. 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 Come on
to stop it. George, stop it! She's trying to show me something! What are you doing? She's trying stop. to show me something! Stop George, it. she's trying to show me something! All right, Let go stop of it. me! Come here, stop oh. it! Come here! Oh. Come on, take it easy! Take it easy! Take it easy! Oh. Take it easy. Oh. All right. All right, just, just take it easy. Just, just stay right there. I'll be right back. I want him to show me something, George. My baby want to show me something. George. You should have seen her skin. It was like alabaster. It was glowing. I can't let her keep hurting herself. Well, is there some place for long-term treatment? I mean, she needs it for her own good. You know, some place discreet, maybe out of town. And under a different name for her own protection. You're not putting me away. <clears throat> no, I'll call, I'll call you back. I'm just trying to shield you, honey. Shield me? Shield me from what? Press, from social ostracism. I mean, you know how people are. I don't care how people are. You're not putting me away. Easy, easy. Look, I'm not saying that you do, but if you did need long-term treatment or something, we could just say that you'd gone back to Kansas and you're visiting relatives. I think it'd be good for your own protection. Come on, let me take you back up to bed. I do it myself. I'm going to stay down here and finish my work, okay? Sweetheart, please. Stay away from me. Just get away from me. You had that pillow. What? I saw you, George. So, sweetheart, please. Stay away from me. Stay away from me. What are you trying to do to me? I hate the police. My husband tried to kill me. What did you put in that shot? Nembutol, to help you relax. I can't go to sleep. You need rest. No! I'll come in here. There's security at every door. I want to see another doctor. Don't you like me? I have the right to see another doctor. You can't keep me in here. I'm afraid that we can. That's what we're going to find out. And the first step to getting well is knowing something's wrong. Now, let's get you into bed, and you can go to sleep. Please don't lock me up. Did you reach her? I'm so excited. She said she'll see you tonight at 6 at the Hotel Provence. Good luck. I'll be there. Thanks, Denise. Uh, ma'am? Yes? Oh, uh, your husband hired me to uh, make sure you wouldn't be disturbed. OK, um, I'm just going down to the sunroom. So if a nurse comes back, just tell her that's where I am. Uh, 
Yes, ma'am. Westfield. Hello. You prefer to be examined in the hall? No, uh, no, I, uh, I'm sorry. You already are apologizing. Stop it and close the door. Uh, please close the door. You haven't been here long enough to be sorry. Oh, relax, for God's sake. I won't eat you. I must tell you, I take very few patients, no matter who your husband is. I do this for art, not money. For art? Yeah. Come, sit down. Assume I know what I am saying. I am a doctor. <laughs> I have degrees in all the medical sciences, yeah. Biology, you see, behind my painting here. Biology, physics, internal medicine, psychiatry, psychiatry. <laughs> No matter what you think, psychiatry is not the science, no. It is an art form. Oh. With uh, theories... Oh, paint. I do the little painting, too. Theories that rich people like to pay to hear. Oh. Voila, psychiatry. What can I do for you? Oh. Well, did uh, my friend Denise tell you anything? Denise? Do you see, Denise? I am asking you. Do you believe that people talk to the dead? Now we get to it, huh? Do you? Are you aware that Einstein believed it, huh? Jesus Christ, Hippocrates, Jung, who are we to quarrel with the greatest minds in civilization, huh? So, some doctor in, uh, well, Connecticut doesn't think so, so what? Hmm? I investigate, then I confirm. That is what I do. Hmm? But now I think I prescribe something for you. Yeah. Come, hot tea. You look like hell, my dear. <laughs> Maintenance found him in the elevator. Is this your fault? Are you on duty here? Yeah, she told me she was going to the sun. Stay with her. Call the police. Call the police. Go! You're an idiot, Hamilton. What if she's out there and has one of those episodes, huh? She hurts herself. Who's liable for that? You! Sit down, sit down. You're making me nervous. Have a cookie. <clears throat> no, thanks. Oh, I see you are from a Protestant background. Rigid home environment, no display of emotion, controlling father. You from the Midwest, by any chance? How can you tell all that? <laughs> Regional accent, posture. Plus, I have to keep telling you to sit down. You don't even eat a cookie, even though you've had a few exhausting weeks, Denise tells me. You don't seem to be in touch with your needs. You are certainly not expressing them. You are compulsively nice. I will fix that, Mrs. Westfield. I will. What makes you think you weren't sleepwalking or dreaming? I was completely awake. I was aware of my husband grabbing me, trying to stop me. And you could still see Jenny, even though you were awake? Absolutely. Was she transparent or solid? 
a solid thing. I, well, I could feel her touch. Did she speak to you? Yeah. Every time. I mean, it was hard to understand her sometimes, but... She was always trying to tell me something. I have never had a case of clinical death for more than five minutes. It is a very long time. You're very lucky to have come back. Would your husband have a reason to kill you? No. Then he's a very unusual husband. What was his relationship with your daughter? Well, well he, he loved my daughter. He, he adopted her. How did she feel about him? She was um, a little reluctant to call him daddy, but she liked him. Is your husband a jealous man with you? With me? No, I wouldn't call it jealousy. What would you call it? Possessive. I guess sometimes I feel like I'm a possession of his. You know, he's always adjusting me. My hair and my clothes and, oh, patrolling what I wear. I guess it's kind of loving, I don't know. Oh, I know these patrolling types. So. <laughs> <laughs> I do. For <laughs> sure. I tell you what, you stay here, we study you, we work together. No fee. Perhaps we uncover something. What? Life after death. Wouldn't that be fun? Especially for those fancy Connecticut doctors? Believe me, you are not going insane. But it is very late. I will lend you some of my wonderful pajamas. I could barely look at her children after the memorial service. Because I felt so responsible. So you feel guilty for Renee's death as well? I am guilty. You know, I think I let you keep that shirt. It looks so good on you. <laughs> I tell you what I think about your case. You are free to disbelieve me, whatever. You died in the accident. You were really dead for more than five minutes. And I believe that in that time, you rejoined your daughter. There is great love there. And that is where your soul still is, with her, instead of here. I'm coming. Are you Marie Neuberger? Yes. I'm George Westfield. I'm here for my wife. Oh. Let me tell you something. If you've done anything to harm her, you will pay for it the rest of your life. Oh, well, Mr. Westfield, your wife is quite safe. She is here, as you can see. Krista, I want you to come home. I want to take care of you. Remember what I told you. Don't need advice from you, thank you. She's under the care of Dr. Hamilton. Uh, George, I want Dr. Newberger. I'm in complete control of my faculties, and I want Dr. Newberger. No, you're coming home now. Look, I've been very patient and supportive of you all the way, but I'm not going to stand for you getting involved with this woman. She's a charlatan and a quack. I'm calling the police, Mr. Westfield, and I intend to press charges.
you want to leave me? You're all I love in the whole world. But I'm losing you. If you want me to move out of the house, I will. If you want to stay here in the city, that's fine. But I want you to be where people love you and know you and are going to take care of you. I want you to be home. I want you to be safe. Doing what you're doing here is only going to confuse you more. I've never been clearer. <sighs> you're killing me. She wants to help me. No, he's not here. He's at home. Honey, why are you crying? Can you tell mommy why you're crying? You're here. The butterfly. The butterfly. George. George, what? be very sure about this, Krista. Charge of murder is most serious. You heard it? You saw it? No. Unfortunately, I saw nothing. The authorities will not open an investigation into murder simply because you claim your dead child's spirit spoke to you. Why do you have it on tape? I have you on tape. Only you. I have an idea, though. Would you be prepared to take a lie detector test? They are admissible in certain courts. Uh, of, co of course, anything. Then if what uh, Jenny says is true... So you don't, you don't believe it? I believe you. But she is... A child, remember? Uh, it is possible that she is trying to hurt her stepfather for taking your love away from her. Or maybe even stir up trouble and punish you for well, marrying a man who is not her real daddy. If we are to go public on this, Krista, it is very important that we keep an open mind on all of it. But I, I believe she's telling me the truth. And I'll prove it. Somehow I'll prove it. Look, we've got to get her some help, Bennett. 
We've got to get her some help, because this Newberger quack is it's going to push her over the edge. It's going to destroy her. I highly doubt that, George. I think she's very well thought of. In some circles, anyway. I, I for one, I don't believe her for a minute. Well, I do. Nothing else you've tried has worked. Why not this? Why? Because catch this. Krista thinks that I tried to attack her. This woman's going to convince her that it's true. Then she's going to get her to press charges against me, all because of a stupid hallucination. OK. If she does any damage to Krista, that's malpractice. That we can act on. But we have to prove she's doing something wrong. Krista's in no condition to pick her own physician. Let's just declare her legally incompetent for her own good. Please, just answer yes or no, nothing else. After your accident, you began seeing your deceased daughter? Yes. After one of these experiences, did your husband try to kill you? What is your response? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Hello, yes. Dr. Newberger, Phil Cam. Listen, I ran the psychological stress evaluator on her voice tape, and I went back over the both polygraphs point by point. I'll tell you, within the limits of these machines, she is telling the truth. So you finally get an A, Mr. Cam. Thank you. That's two of us now who believe you. Yes, he was in the house, but he had just come in from being outside with my daughter where they'd been rowing. Were his clothes wet? Did he have on the same clothes? I didn't see him come in. We were getting ready for a party, and he had uh, just changed into a robe. No witnesses, I presume? No, there weren't any witnesses. Look, she's tired, Mr. Fromm. Five minutes. What's a drowning butterfly? I don't know. I know. I know that she's trying to tell me something. And I, I thought that you was the district attorney. I, I mean, I know that there's evidence. If somebody would just look into it. Your polygraph intrigues me. Visions won't arrest a man, but if they lead to evidence, like you say, I'll see what I can do. I'll be in touch in a few days. Thank you. You're welcome. Come, Krista. Mr. Smart, district attorney, he says the case is a legal zero. Why? No evidence of homicide. The original investigation was very thorough, according to him. He spent 10 days corroborating it. That's what she was trying to show me. How can you know? You haven't seen her in weeks. I know it. I know it has something to do with the butterfly she keeps talking about. Have you figured out what this means? No. No, she wants me to. She wants to reach me. I know how I can make it easier for her. How? Oh. By being in her own bedroom again, where she feels safe. You mean go back to the house? Yes. What about George? George knows that it's real. He knows that it's real, and he's afraid because he knows what I'm going to find out. 
Krista, we have to be very careful. If he knows, this means he's very dangerous. You know that I've taken you to every neurologist and psychiatrist that I could find. I've done everything that I could. And they didn't have any experience in this. They thought I was a schizophrenic. Instead, you go to this quack who has ridiculous ideas. He likes to prey on people's misery to bleed them for money. <gasps> oh, Mr. Westfield, please. It is not a question of money. I am treating Krista for free precisely because of the legal ramifications. Possible legal ramifications? What are you talking about? What is she talking about? Look, George, if Dr. Newberger thinks that Crystal would be better off at home... I want her to go home. I've said that all along. Fine, but not with her. She makes her worse. She makes her believe in these delusions. I have to be there. You go to work, Mr. Westfield. Who will protect her if she has another episode? I've got a full-time nurse. Dr. Hamilton has plenty of them, I'm sure. George, I want Dr. Newberger. She is not going to get well under Dr. Hamilton or any of his staff because he makes her believe she is crazy without the slightest possibility that she might be telling the truth. You believed me? Yes, I believed you. I believed you when it was a one-time thing. I mean, I... I knew when you found that necklace that that was a miracle. It appeared to be a miracle. But then it kept happening over and over again, in public. It's not a miracle, Krista. It's something wrong that happened because of that car crash. You know it. And you're not facing up to it. Oh, but there's nothing wrong here that Dr. Hamilton can fix, Mr. Westfield. Oh, all the tests in the world will not show what is wrong. The damage is not to Krista's body or her mind. It is to her soul. I want her in her own home under my supervision. Do you want to help me? Exactly what do you think I've been trying to do all this time?
Hurry. Without her husband? I am the doctor. We get the hell out of here now. Something in her hand. She found something in the pond. Help me, please. She's clamped down. I don't want to fracture her finger. You won't fracture. Just pull gently, gently. Hey, what's that? It's like a watch. A man's gold watch. With long hairs caught in it. Looks like a butterfly. What? on the watch have to match your daughter's hair. Unfortunately, that means uh, exhuming the body. Well, what if she's not there? You don't understand me. She was with me, physically. She pulled me to the bottom of the pond. She put my hand on the watch. She was with me, touching me. January 23rd. Who'll be making the identification, please? I will. You are the mother of the child? <sighs> yes. Is this Jennifer Langdon Westfield? Langdon. Jennifer Langdon. I'm removing <coughs> several strands of the girl's hair. Approximately 11 inches in length. <coughs> Placing them in an envelope for later analysis. This belongs to you. The hair sample, which was removed from the watch band, was reasonably preserved in fresh water and clearly shows evidence of being stretched as if were yanked out in clumps. Excuse us, Mr. West, Mr. West, excuse us, Mr. West. Can I have your autograph, sir? Please. Now in session, Judge Wiley presiding. All rise. Order. Order. Everyone knows that George Westfield is one of the most prominent investment brokers on Wall Street. It's inconceivable that a man so well known, so publicized, would, would what, he, he'd lure his seven-year-old stepdaughter into a small boat, knowing full well that she didn't know how to swim, and, and, and murder her while her mother's upstairs dressing for a party. That's exactly what happened. 
We're going to prove that little Jenny struggled to survive while he held her under. We're going to prove that she fought so desperately to live against the brute force of a stepfather that she loved and trusted that she ripped his wristwatch from his arm when she went down. We're going to show that Mr. Westfield consistently acts out of this pathological need to dominate everyone. Even another man's seven-year-old daughter is a rival to be bought off when he can or destroyed when he can't. And routine evidence alone is all I need to prove our case. But you're going to hear some of the most remarkable testimony that any jury anywhere has ever been asked to consider. Now, it may conflict with your previous knowledge and beliefs. And that all I ask, all I ask is that you listen to what you're about to hear with an open mind. The alleged evidence that the district attorney is going to ask you to entertain today is essentially a bunch of psychic bumbo jumbo completely unacceptable in a court of law and not worthy of your time and consideration. We will show that Mrs. Westfield is unfortunately mentally unstable. That she is recovering from a near fatal accident and a series of tragic personal losses in recent years that have allowed her to be manipulated by a cunning and very dangerous charlatan. Now, the DA will attempt to sway you with Mr. Westfield's public persona. I hope that you can look beyond that. Because if you do, I think you will find throughout these proceedings that George Westfield is just a man. Now, no one can undo the pain caused my client during this fraudulent indictment. You have the opportunity to give him back his, his dignity and his honor. And perhaps most important of all, you have the opportunity to give George Westfield a chance to save his wife. Go on, Mrs. Parker. And that's when I realized it was Jenny. Did you see her fall out of the boat? No. No, she was drifting, uh, face down. And I ran over to your house. Drifting? Wasn't that odd? If Jenny drifted, wouldn't the boat have drifted with her? It didn't occur to me at the time. But the fact is, Jenny was drifting away from the boat. I don't get it. Unless, unless someone drowned Jenny and then, and then pushed the boat out again and then pushed the boat back out again, trying to get it near the body. Objection. Sustained. I began to see my daughter. Was this in dreams? No, I was conscious. She was as real as you are.
How do you know it's true? Because I saw her. I heard her. And she gave me proof. And then Jenny appeared to you at Dr. Newberger's. Yes. And what information did she give you? Objection. Jennifer is dead. She cannot give us information of any kind. I'll rephrase. When Jenny appeared to you at Dr. Newberger's, what is it you claim she told you? She said that my husband drowned her. Order. I'm warning you. You'll be barred from court if you give us any more disruptions. Is there anything distinctive about the watch you believe Jenny led you to in the pond? Yes, it has a design on the face that resembles a butterfly. And when I found the watch, there were several strands of my daughter's hair tangled in the band that were pulled out in a struggle. Objection. Sustained. Your witness. No questions at this time. What are you doing? Not while she has their sympathy. I floated around on the ceiling. I was perfectly conscious. I watched them trying to get my heart started again. Which they did, obviously. <laughs> You're the 12th witness? 12th witness today to describe virtually the same out-of-body experience. Do you find this remarkable, Father? Not at all. I find it common. Dr. Holvig, outside of your psychiatric duties, you are also the author of a respected and widely read book on clinical death, are you not? Yes. Do people talk to the dead, doctor? Well, they believe that they do. Now, clinical death means the cessation of some bodily functions, but the brain is still alive. In other words, no one has ever returned from the dead. Totally impossible. Were you surprised when your wife found your watch in the pond? No, not really. That's where I lost it. How did you lose it? What? It got tangled in Jenny's hair. Mr. Westfield, how did Jenny's hair get tangled in the watch? Well, I swam out from the shore to save her. And I got to her, and I, I got a hold of her, but she kept going under. And I got so desperate at one point that I, I grabbed her hair, and some of it got caught right here in the watch band, just like this one. So I pulled it off as quick as I could so that I could get a better grip on her. Hank, he's lying. He's lying! He's lying! Be seated. He's lying! Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Be seated. Sit down. Call Krista Westfield to the stand. Now, you claim that Jennifer told you about the drowning watch, the drowning butterfly after Renee's memorial service. She appeared to you on the stairs, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. She then led me to it in the pond. I see. Were there any witnesses to this event at Renee's? Yes. Who saw Jennifer? Uh-huh. And then you claim that your daughter again returned from her so-called resting place to inform you that her stepfather killed her. Were there any witnesses to that? Yes, Dr. Newberger was there and she recorded it. Oh, really? May we now please hear Jenny's voice on tape? No. 
I beg your pardon? No. No. With all due respect, Mrs. Westfield, to your present stress and past history, are you now saying that the only testimony on your behalf is that of your dead seven-year-old daughter? Objection. And that you expect this jury to convict your husband because you hear voices? Objection. That's badgering the witness. Overruled. It is not a matter of does out-of-body experience happen, but rather under what conditions. Yeah, but, but other psychiatrists who've examined Mrs. Westfield, actually, actually the majority of the medical profession, they dispute your theories, even ridicule you. Are they incompetent? No, just frightened or inexperienced. They laugh, so what? The frightened and ignorant always laugh. They laugh at the right brothers. Everybody flies anyway. Then, just because someone believes that they've talked to the dead, that doesn't mean that they're insane. Quite the contrary. Most people in the world believe they talk to the dead. The statistics show that 72% of widows and widowers believe they communicate with their deceased spouse. Your witness, Dr. Nurberger. Does the name Samuel Barton mean anything to you? It was my patient. And where is he today? He's dead. Dead. Died under your treatment, didn't he? Well, sir, very early in my career. Mm -hmm. Committed suicide at 20, did he not? He was a very sick young man. He had tried to commit suicide very many times. Ah, you have to but understand. committed suicide after you treated him with an untested drug. Isn't that right? In <sighs> London? Recipine. They did not know. It was an experimental medication. An untried the... drug. On which he became acutely depressed and threw himself out of a 10th floor window. Is that correct? That's what Objection. happened with the Mesopine. Objection! Overruled. The boy's parents sued for malpractice. You settled out of court admitting medical errors. Is that not correct? I did my best. Any psychiatrist in my Oh, any psychiatrist? The... Did not the British General Medical Council censor you because of your actions in that they case? They censored everybody. Yes or no? It was a very yes conservative no? organization. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. As a result, your husband divorced you and you took back your maiden name of Nierberger in order to enter Harvard with a clean slate, so to speak. He deserted me. Of course I took back Trying my name. Trying to obliterate your past, hoping it wouldn't follow you, you changed every document. Every record legally. But why so thorough? Unless you were ashamed. I have nothing to... That's all. I have nothing whatsoever That's to all. be ashamed of. You may step down. That happens. She's medicine.
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise and face the jury? How do you find? Your Honor, we, the jury, find the defendant, George Westfield, not guilty. There's nothing else I can do, baby. I tried. I tried everything I could. I know that you were telling me the truth. I'm just, I'm just so sorry I married him. When we first examined the evidence, I was convinced Mr. Westfield was guilty. But our system has proved we were wrong. An innocent man's been maligned by a sick wife and a so-called psychiatrist. My first duty is to justice. Reporting an acquitted verdict in mm, here's the spin West control, from And to justice. Brown. I'm Sandy Heatherton. <laughs> I have a little house in Innsbruck. No. I'm not going to run away. I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to change my name. No. Good, I'm glad. Jenny wouldn't like it. Jenny's gone now. She's not coming back. Now Jenny is with me. Always with me. And I am not going to listen to anything. Just because it's logical, or sensible, or nice. I earn the right to be mad. You certainly have, my dear. Join the club. I know that it's not over. I know that. down there. Krista, is that you?
boat while I get in? Ha, 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 ha,